request also to say a word of prayer before I start. That whatever we discuss today, you know, God will help us learn something and you know, it's also knowing one another. And you pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because you are our God. And we thank you for who you are and what you are to us today. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us thus far. Even at this time, we want to thank you for bringing your my servant, Sir Azit Deborah, to be with us. Father, we pray that whatever he is saying to us, whatever he is saying to us, we will remember them. Be with us from the beginning of this program, I mean, the study of the program, till the end of the program. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, once again, uh, good, morning. good morning. A little bit of uh, introduction about me. Um, I'm Surajit Debarma from Tripura. I am um, basically with my Christian friends known as Sal. So that's my Facebook ID and well, mostly in Silong they, they know me as Sal. But officially it's Surajit Debarma. Um, I come from Hindu background. My mom dad, they are still Hindus. I've got one younger sister. She's married and after marriage uh, she has uh, accepted Christ and they were not getting their I mean child and Five years after marriage, after the accepted Christ, God blessed them even with the son. Mm -hmm. My younger brother was in Shillong for since class 11. Then he f just finished his master MSc environmental science, and he's also involved with our fellowships. And he's one of the Christian worship leaders for our people. He's doing quite well, and he has Nelson Barok, a YouTube channel where he's focusing on gospel uh, musics and videos. And so, I work as a senior medical officer right now in Nazareth, but I have come to Shillong in 2009. So I work with many hospitals. So 2009 and now it's 19, it's almost uh, 10 years. Right. So I did not know how time passed because I was involved with our Tripura Christian Fellowship. And before it was only in Shillong, but God has given like me opportunity to you know continue his work national and then we are also looking for abroad we call the national tripura christian fellowship it is a body like uh, just for an example like the naga christian fellowship we have we call that ntcf national tripura christian fellowship and we have around uh, 17 states at the moment under the national tcf and uh, though i am a professionally a medical doctor pass out from rims Imphal. i know anybody is from manipur um, I accepted Christ there uh, in my MBBS days, and then I, uh, after that MBBS course, I came to Shillong and worked with Negrims and other hospitals, super care and with GVK EMRI. And mostly, I'm uh, I've worked in the emergency rooms, emergency departments, and I I work I love working in emergency. It's a tense situation, and not many will love it. But when I work in an emergency department, I also get time for my family for the ministry work. Had it been other departments, I would not be getting that specific time. We are busy in emergency and Nazareth is the busiest emergency department in the state. Mm -hmm. uh, we are catering to almost 100 emergencies every day. Minimum is 100, we go to 150, 160, it's like that. So uh, why I'm just talking about this is because even in the workplace, even in the emergency rooms, I have seen God doing wonders, miracles, mm -hmm. you know, those patients, mm -hmm. like he used us. Sundays we don't get to go to church every Sunday, but being even there, we we are seeing some pastors, we are seeing some Christian leaders, we are seeing some ministers. So that way I feel blessed though we are not able to be in the church room, but we are helping a Christian leaders or even outside Christian to many who are coming in pain and one way able to, you know, through the profession itself. Uh, today, as we said, healthy lifestyle. So I will, uh, since I'm a Christian doctor, I'm a doctor, but I'm a Christian, so... Apart from my professional knowledge, at least by God's grace, I accepted Christ in 2003. Since then, I've been trying to read my Bible. I've been uh, trying to do whatever I can to my best. So, basically, healthy lifestyle, I think in a few slides we'll get to know. And there's a big broad of uh, diseases that comes under the non-communicable disease. Last time we have discussed about the body parts and all our body and different type of sicknesses that comes and all. So, but today we, you know, in short time, we cannot discuss everything, but since this lifestyle is really a very important taking over, you know, this unhealthy lifestyle is taking over uh, the top position 
as a whole over the wall mm -hmm. you know so we'll get to know so uh, as the slide goes and i might go from this powerpoint to another there are different topics as a time permit so health what is health if i ask you are you healthy or you know what is health and we really listen to this word health means you know your being and it's part of you is it not every day we are healthy so we be able to see me able to listen to me but if you're sick you won't be sitting down here you'll be coming to my hospital and getting drip or you know <laughs> getting some injection but since you're healthy you can listen to me you can sit here concentrate so but there's a standard today the medicine is uh, everything evidence based because not only allopathic there are ayurvedic homeopathy and you know so many uh, medicine branches have come up homeopathy dental side is there so but we need always a standard a guideline like uh, for our own ministry or organizations we have certain principle guideline and when we stay with that guideline principle we go straight and not much of confusion but whenever somebody tries to divert or deviate away from the guidelines or certain standard from the experienced person then sometimes they land up in problem troubles also so according who it is who but w is a world health organization this is the apex body for all the health organization the talk today that i'm going to give to you is not just my own created or my experience but i am practicing evidence-based medicine i've been trained in evidence-based diabetes course hypertension course thyroid courses and all recognized by international bodies and all so i did not do my md or something but i continued i have interest in this non-communicable disease and uh, so uh, the evidence-based definition and even the explanation that I will put some slides so that we all take it as a standard. So WHO definition, it, it what how it defines health is health, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. Most of the time when we talk of health, we are thinking only the physical part. Somebody big muscles and going to gym, you think is very healthy. Where is that person going to commit suicide? We have seen somebody who is in a, such a good status, wise chancellor status, engineer, doctors. What you find? They go and commit suicide. So it's not only physical, it's state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. Somebody may be very good, you know, physically and academically, but he might be alone, he might not want to mix with anybody. You know, he's alone. They say, you know, man is a social animal. Yeah, like that no, we are not anywhere we're much more than that we are created in god's image but we are like it's social well-being also because it's automatically connected when you are physically well mentally well and you have a connection with social and especially as leaders here i think that's very important being social the moment physically well mentally well and you have a connection with social and especially as leaders here i think that's very important being social the moment a pastor or a leader say that no i want to focus now on my family my kids and my own life and let me take a break from the mission work or we need certain breaks like that but not break from reading the bible not break from um, worshiping christ or fellowship because this is more um, required you know, for us to continue so health is a state of complete physical mental and social well-being and it continues and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity that's why i said you may physically you might not be coming to us like you know for for medical check you may be very fit you manage it you no know? but then still it is not just the absence of disease that makes you healthy person or but health is it's a complete state where physical mental and social well-being this first slide is very important for each one of us to know because anytime next time you're asked what is health you can Check your internet or w, the, the World Health Organization is defining it and naturally the one who has defined it is a put, put a complete. But I will still like to add one more from Christian perspective. Health is a state of complete physical, mental, social and religious well-being. I would like to put from my aunt mm -hmm. as when I look. Because here if they put religious there are many atheists in medical fraternity and you know inventor. there may be an issue with the world health. but for me i have no issue to put one more thing is physical mental social and religious well-being now because whatever we do our everyday inspiration we need god to bless us to give us to to eat well 
to not drink, to not smoke, to not do things that is anti-social. I need my moral character and that's why I put it one more. I don't, okay, it's not WHO, it's my that well being and religious, okay? Uh, well being too. Health. So it is a choice, is it a choice to be healthy? What do you think? Is it a choice? Yes, no, or yes and no. <laughs> you can choose one. What will you think, sister? Is it a choice that you want to be healthy? If I ask you, do you want to be healthy? What will you say? Yes. yes. Are you healthy? So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why so delay? <laughs> yes, brother. What do you think? Is it a choice? Do you want? To, is it a choice like to be healthy? Yes. Are you healthy? Not so healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so can you vote yes and no? Yes. You know, it's a choice because yeah, you want to be healthy. But sometimes, even though you want to be healthy, the I say the trend, the environment, the lifestyle that we take. It's not making us healthy. So whether you want or not, no, it is degrading you to the unhealthy ways if you are not careful. No? And that's why we come with a lecture orientation this way that we are sensitized to take care of those things. We might not realize. I think as uh, my lecture finishes, then we can know something about it. There are silent killers this day, they call it. Silent killers. Not the outside external, but they are silent, called silent killers because... They're destroying you from inside out, like that state, physical, mental, social, you know, and religious well-being. So, like, they're inside the struggle that, that are destroying them. And these terms are used for diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cancer, which others are not doing, but inside it is destroying you. And even pastors are not excused, please. Sorry, I have to put this line. Because last year, we lost our senior pastor after our conference. He was a diabetic patient, but in the conference, he happened to eat the healthy food. It was in Dimapur, a little <laughs> bit of carbohydrate, and, and he felt sick after the conference. Mm -hmm. For me as a doctor, I felt really sad, you know, like he's a diabetic and we could have helped or I don't know. So, and on the same day, we lost one more uh, family member of our uh, former general secretary from this year. His father also died same morning in a span of five minutes. First the pastor died, then he died. So that was really like, it is shocking. So these are silent killers, and but it will take away our life. And that's why we need to be very careful. And there are dangers of unhealthy lifestyle. So these are the silent killers. The diabetes, hypertension, obesity, or the excess weight that we carry. And these are going to lead you to heart attack, strokes. Okay, these are dangerous and of course, I've not put cancer, but diabetes, hypertension, obesity, this will lead you. When you have high BP, it will lead you to stroke. It can cause your heart attack. And when, when you're obese, you're more prone to have heart attack, stroke. When you have a diabetes, similarly. So this change, as I call, silent killers. Last time I took off two white poisons. You know, two white poison. One is, what is the white thing that we take daily? Sugar. And salt. salt. Tasty. They're the tastiest thing. You cannot imagine your curry without salt, right? And without sugar, you can't have tea. It's so difficult. So they're called two white poisons today. Because they are the one take, leading us to this diabetes. You take too much of sugar, you'll have diabetes. You take too much of salt, you'll have hypertension. It's not you take board, you'll have obesity, and you take rice, and as you say. You know, so there are many others, but you know, this, are, this is a reality. The daily we take. So what is our solution, you know? It's prevention. Knowing about it and the choice of living a healthy lifestyle. I have not finished my slide, but I will take you to this. And then, you know, adopting a healthy lifestyle. This physical, and by lifestyle, what we mean is actually physical activity or exercise. That is what we mean by proper lifestyle include exercise and diet and diet control. We talk of diet control. The latter part, I would like you to open with me with this Daniel uh, chapter 1 verse 12. He gives a 10 days challenge we all know about that. So we will just get into this uh, like uh, healthy lifestyle about physical exercise, what it really means 
as we continue uh, our day-to-day -day life living. No, but we need to adopt healthy lifestyle is physical activity, exercise, and diet mode. What is it as a guideline? I will be taking you through that. For that, I want to now uh, just show you a diabetes video. Hello, and welcome to The Answered Patient. I'm Jane Hansen. Our focus in this episode is on diabetes. We'll investigate the different types of diabetes and how they are diagnosed. We'll also tell you some of the symptoms of this disease, as well as how it might affect your body. We'll provide you with strategies like the daily monitoring of your blood sugar levels called glucose so that you can keep your diabetes under control. We'll also give you some tips about diet and exercise, which will lessen the complications of this disease. Just losing a little bit of weight is often enough to get the diabetes under control. Even if you don't have diabetes yet, but think you might be at risk for this disease, these tips might also help in preventing the development of some types of diabetes. But first, here's something you need to know. Despite the best efforts of researchers and doctors all over the world, there is currently no known cure for diabetes. But as we'll illustrate, the care and treatment of diabetes has dramatically improved in recent years, making it a disease you can learn to live with. So what exactly is diabetes? Diabetes is a metabolic disorder of the pancreas, a small gland located below and just behind the stomach. The pancreas produces a hormone called insulin, which helps deliver glucose into every cell of the body. The symptoms of this disease can be serious. Dehydration, which might cause extreme thirst, unexplained weight loss, changes in vision, and extreme fatigue. Left untreated, diabetes can lead to a host of devastating complications to almost every cell and organ in the body. It is currently estimated that in the United States alone, nearly 20 million people have diabetes and many more have prediabetes. The two major types of diabetes are called type 1 and type 2. Until recently, type 1 was known as juvenile diabetes because it was most commonly diagnosed in children and young adults. Type 1 diabetes occurs when virtually all of the insulin-producing cells in the pancreas have been destroyed. Everyone diagnosed with type 1 diabetes must take injections of insulin every day in order to survive. Been feeling well? Yep. Good. School okay? Yep. Terrific. Of the two major types of diabetes, type 1 is much less common than type 2. Only about 5 to 10 percent of diabetics have type 1. Type 2 diabetes is much more prevalent. 90 to 95 percent of all diabetics have type 2 diabetes. It's estimated that about a third of all patients with actual definite diagnosable di type 2 diabetes today are just out there in the U.S. totally undiagnosed, walking around, elevated blood sugars, and no one's the wiser. There are several risk factors for type 2 diabetes, including family history, high cholesterol, you can open your hand if you'd like, and high blood pressure. But the leading cause of type 2 diabetes is obesity. And 80 to 90 percent of people with this type of diabetes are overweight. Other risk factors include race and ethnicity. For example, we know that in the United States, African Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans are two times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than Caucasians. I had a severe headache I couldn't get rid of for two days. And I will. Because the symptoms of type 2 diabetes are often subtle, some people might go for years before a diagnosis is made and treatment can begin. For example, it is estimated that in the U.S. alone, there might be nearly six million undiagnosed cases of diabetes. A third but less common type of disease, gestational diabetes, can develop in women during pregnancy. The good news is that in most cases, gestational diabetes ends after the mother gives birth. Type 1 and type 2 diabetes have similar complications. In both cases, diabetics tend to produce excessive urine, experience tingling or numbness in the hands or feet, and have wounds that are slow to heal. If not properly managed, over time, diabetes can lead to high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, kidney disease, blindness, infections, and limb amputations. 
Diabetes is a serious and frightening condition, but the good news is that it can be effectively managed with oral drugs and insulin therapy, proper diet, exercise, and other good health habits. In the other chapters of this episode, you will find out more about how diabetes is diagnosed, get some science on what it does to your body, and learn strategies you can use to control your type 1 or type 2 diabetes. It's been okay. In our personal stories chapter, you'll meet healthcare providers and patients who deal with this disease every day. Finally, if you would like to be kept up to date on diabetes, you can subscribe to this series on healthanswerstv.com. Every year, more than 700,000 people in the United States have a stroke. Strokes are the third leading cause of death in adults and the number one cause of long-term disability. In this episode of The Answered Patient, we'll discuss the risk factors for strokes, the symptoms to look out for, and the latest treatments available. We'll also tell you the steps you can take to help prevent a stroke from occurring. Strokes can happen to anyone at any time. They sometimes begin with a sudden and powerful headache that can feel like a thunderclap. My head, my head really hurt, it was hurting. I never had a headache so bad. It was like it just one stop, it was just pounding. Like right here, it was just pounding, pounding, pounding. The symptoms can be large or small. Blurred vision, loss of coordination, trouble speaking, or numbness on one side of the body. If you or somebody you're with is having those symptoms, sit them down or lay them down so they don't hurt themselves. Don't give them any medications or food by mouth. Just pick up the phone, call 911, get them to the hospital as soon as possible. Prompt treatment can limit the extent of brain damage and possibly mean the difference between life and death. The mantra of stroke has been time is brain, and that just refers to the fact that we really want to emphasize that time matters. Every minute of delay between the onset of symptoms and medical therapy leads to further brain damage. Strokes occur when the brain is suddenly deprived of blood, oxygen, and nutrients. There are two types of strokes, ischemic and hemorrhagic. An ischemic stroke occurs when an artery in the brain becomes blocked, cutting off the blood supply. When blood flow is blocked only temporarily, this is known as a transient ischemic attack, or TIA. Though these are referred to as mini-strokes, TIA shouldn't be taken lightly. They may be a warning that a full-blown stroke is on its way. Well, I was busy making soup and at my daughter's and I suddenly began to feel across my face this tinkling and uh, it, uh, it didn't go away. The symptoms are basically identical to the symptoms of a stroke, but they typically last only a few minutes or a few hours and the patient clinically makes a full recovery, meaning they don't have any symptoms left over. The importance of a TIA is that a TIA can oftentimes herald that a stroke is about to come in the next few hours or days. The second type of stroke is a hemorrhagic stroke. This occurs when a weakened artery in the brain suddenly ruptures, flooding the surrounding brain tissue. Regardless of the type of stroke, the results can be devastating. After a stroke, about half the people cannot walk normally. After the stroke, about a fifth to a quarter of folks cannot talk normally. A third of them may have significant depression, and a quarter to a third may end up in a nursing home. Despite what you may assume, strokes can happen to anyone, whether you're six or 60. The myth is that only old people get strokes, and that's just not true. It spans the complete uh, you know, lifespan of, of, of human beings, so we really want to get the, the message out to anyone that it could happen to you, and we really want to uh, make them aware of it so that if something does happen, we can act quickly. The most important thing people need to know about strokes is that 80% are preventable. The first step toward avoiding a stroke is to identify your risk factors and get them under control.
There are certain conditions that predispose people to having strokes. The usual high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes are very high risk factors for people to have strokes. No dizziness or lightheadedness. A little. We really want those individuals to start getting treatments early because those, those conditions over time is what leads to stroke. And we're left with treating people at the end, after they've had their stroke and all those years have gone by that they could have done something. There are also certain lifestyle choices that can help reduce the chances of suffering a stroke. Diet and exercise are extremely important for preventing the risk of stroke, as well as heart attacks. We know that good diet and good exercise reduce other risk factors like hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol. When a stroke does occur, a variety of treatment options is available. These include clot-busting drugs, minimally invasive procedures, and emergency surgery. The key is seeking help immediately before too many brain cells are lost. Stroke victims who receive prompt treatment have the best chance of recovery. While a stroke can be a frightening and dangerous condition, having the right information can go a long way toward prevention and survival. In the other chapters of this episode, you can learn more about the symptoms of strokes, how strokes affect the body, and the treatment strategies that doctors recommend most. And in our personal stories chapter, you'll meet real patients who have survived a stroke and the family members and doctors who are helping them recover. Finally, if you'd like to be kept up to date on stroke prevention and treatment, you can subscribe to this series on our health channel at AnswersTV.com. Actually, we always think heart as like this, is not when we love somebody or send a love sign, it's a big heart like this. And in Indian cinema, there's an arrow also passing through. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has hit me. But anatomically, when we stand, it's on the left side. You can see this. It's not very clear here, but yeah. If. So it's staying here, you now our heart. No? And heart attack is one emergency that will kill you immediately. The former president, Abdul Kalam, came and died in the program that he attended in IIM Silong. And he was taken to Bethany, but then by the time they could not save him. Okay. So, so it was a heart attack, what we call myocardial infarction. See, this is our heart, and we know there are two systems, basically the oxygenated blood and non-oxygen arteries and veins. Arteries carry the oxygen and the veins carry the carbon dioxide. It's good to know a little bit basic, because what happens in the heart attack is, there is a block to the artery that is supplying the heart muscles. Our heart is continuously pumping. The veins we see, you know when you get a drip, it goes up, the veins goes up. The deoxygenated de uh, yeah, blood goes up, you know, and then it is sent to the lung, and from there oxygen is taken, and again it comes back to the heart, and then it is being pumped. So the artery is going down, and it carries oxygen, the red color, what we see hemoglobin carry, you know. So, <clears throat> when a heart artery get blocked, when you see it's like a pipe, when a pipe get blocked, you don't get a supply anymore. No? But the nutrient will not get other water anymore. You know, I mean, if this pipe is blocked somewhere, it is leaking. So it will, it might start leaking somewhere else, or and so it's cut off. I mean, the supply is cut off. Then this heart will. The muscles that are not getting oxygen or the blood that is cut off will start secreting some chemicals. And then that will start causing us this chest pain. So a typical uh, chest pain, left-sided typical chest pain, you know, compressing, it's very dangerous and mostly the heart, it, it will radiate to your uh, below this neck, chin and one side, the left upper. No? So anybody tells you, in America or the Western country, their age 40 plus are the ones who have heart attack. But I have personally witnessed in Nazareth, even 22 years old male, just a few, few days back, mm -hmm. is having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Having ECG changes are so he comes with chest pain and 
you become disoriented, sweating, you can't breathe, you know, the restlessness. Even as a well-built person athlete, when it comes that way, when we do ECG and further we do a cardiac marker, it comes positive for heart attack. And some patient, uh, most patients we refer to cardiology negligence. Uh, so, so, see these these slides I put because why the heart arteries are getting blocked. Just uh, have a look at this, this eating junk foods and all. You know the risk factors, risk factors for all these unhealthy lifestyles. As we said, unhealthy lifestyle means what? There is no exercise. You're only sitting and doing things. There is unhealthy diets, eating everywhere. Those photos we can see. And here I've written one line, sitting is dangerous. Even you might be thinking, I'm not taking alcohol. I don't smoke. And I'm a very good boy, good girl or good man. But if you are sitting continuously in an office, doing computer things, working, you know, even that is these days considered dangerous. You are supposed to get up from your seat every 90 minutes. You are supposed to get every 90 minutes from your seat. Just stretch your body, take a little walk and come back and sit and continue the walk. I am not saying you go out for one hour, but you need to break that continuous sitting habit and most the students Workers, we also as uh, doctors in a hospital, we sit sometimes those who sit in OPD. Like I'm in emergency department, I have to keep walking around and smoking, tobacco use, drinking alcohol, and they say stress, work, work, work. These are the risk factors which are all preventable. If you see, we have seen the uh, diabetes video, we have seen the stroke video, but you know the cause is this all. It is not something very big, somebody come in attacking. It's a day-to-day, -day, everyday diet that we take that is harming us. That's why I call them the silent killers. So these are like smoking, alcohol, and this stress is something that can, we have to be careful about. We, our body needs relaxation. Every like uh, organs in our body, it needs a tender level. Like our eyes, when it is kept open for longer duration, then it gets fatigue, you know, that will also cause headache. There will be problem in the long run, and this is mobile phones have come up. The screen is tell you know we are into our mobile phone screen is affecting our our eyes also need relax. That's why we need to sleep. When we sleep, our BP comes down low because there is less activity and you know with heart pumping less, the oxygens are being supplied to our, our all the cells. But when we stress out, we don't sleep. Uh, we are busy with mobile phone and so there is some. Heart is always pumping in order to keep us active, awake. So, these risk factors is what is going to lead into heart attack, into stroke, and even the reason of diabetes. And we have talked a little bit of uh, obesity. So, you know what is requires prevention. You know, right? First thing, our attitude. One is we need to sensitize, and our attitude. You know, individuals, family, as society, we need to create such type of orientation program. We need to have health awareness. From our part, we have to do, the government also has to take initiative and non-government sector has to take initiative. Uh, like, like, you know, government schemes are there, but it's not, if we look the in the notice, if we look our health centers and all, there is not even a functioning glucometer. There is not even a functioning glucometer to um, take the BP, uh, check the sugar or uh, BP instrument. There are all, you know, so we are living, we are in so much hi-fi smartphones, everything is so smart. Is not, but then when it comes to health from individual level, from a family level, to the even to our kids, the food that we give, and you know, we, we are lacking much behind, very much behind. And you know, India is going to become the number one now, right now, China, but India is going to become number one diabetes capital of the world. <laughs> what a name we have, is it not? Mera Bharat Mahan, but we have the capital of diabetes in a similar non communicable because this is. The area we need to be really serious and it has to start from us so awareness has to be created government on government and so but we need an attitude a decision uh, to take care you know and i talk of two white poisons and all that salt thing tasty sweetie tasty sugar right see obesity you can just see him he's happy that we, we, but obesity is also taking study is saying that the age group between 26 years to 35 in india they're the most unfit people. 
because they have just finished study, start earning lots of money and sitting in the office and stress, new jobs and you know, not very really serious. Before that, somehow we are involved in the colleges, we play activities and older people start again getting scared no? because they already start visiting the hospitals, they are warned by the doctor. But this 26 to 35 is the most unhealthy population in our uh, area and obesity gaining weight, okay, weight gain. We don't have time to go detaily, but I'll just tell is, see, if we look one another or our own, we know how much belly we carry, you know, how flat our tummy is, even if the brother looks very fit, but still some amount of fats is there, is not like that thing. You know? So in Indian scenario, outside they are so bulgy and, uh, you know, they have those things 40 years above. But in Indian context, we look slim, but all this fat deposition here is not good. There are many slides that is showing in apple shape, pear shape, body, but we will not go into it. But simple basic is the fats that we carry here in the central level is not good. These are the one that will lead us to diabetes. How these fats that we carry, they are not good fats. The extra triglyceride, cholesterol, what we call the pork that we eat, all these are giving us these things. These are the one that will go and block the receptors. That will go and contribute to the blocking of the arteries in our heart. That's how it happened. The heart is getting blocked by something. And that something is these fats, those uh, unhealthy chemicals, you know, you're not one day, slowly, slowly, slowly. If a drain is left unclean, if a drain is left unclean, sometime one leaf will fall, another day, another tree, tree will fall, someday mud will fall, a rock will fall. Finally, the drain gets blocked. Similarly, every day when we don't exercise, our when we exercise, what happens is we our body starts the circulation is very um, I mean fast. No? Like it's good, it circulates our heart pumps properly. So the drain is you know our arteries are being washed very clear. There's no accumulation. But when we don't exercise, the opposite happens. There is deposition on the blood vessels little by little, little by. And similarly, when we see the stroke video, we saw there is two types of stroke. One is because of high pressure, the arteries break. We call the hemorrhagic stroke. Another is Similar like the heart attack, there's a block in the arteries of the brain. So that is leading to stroke. Just six month baby yesterday, admitted in uh, Nazareth. In the video, they saw six years to 60, they cannot be. Six month baby having an infarct. There may be so many causes, but you can imagine. So today we may be looking for, I don't have anything, only he has diabetes, you want to point him here. But we don't know. Next time it may be each one of us when we don't add up. So by healthy lifestyle, what? We are looking is about our, see this is a chest pain, heart attack. You can see the expression, the play, the hands they put. Why is it when we are aware, somebody near us might be having. We have to, not only doctors, or you, you don't have time to take to the hospital. So you have to act. And what we can do is aspirin. You know, there is something called aspirin. Very cheap. You can keep it with you anywhere. Actually in the force, I worked with BSF earlier when I came last time. So every... A Jawan has to put this aspirin tablet in their pocket wherever they go. And when you have chest pain, you just need to give how much? You need to give if it is 75 mg, 4 tablets. If it is 300 mg tablet, you need to give 1, 152 tablet. Basically, 300 is what you can remember. If you give, you will save time. What it does is that blockage, it will clear off for a while. And till then, you have some time to see him or her to the hospital. And obesity is same, like I say, we gain weight because we are eating but we are not spending. That's where weight gain is. We are eating every day, but we don't burn our calories. So that's how we gain. So this is a healthy life. And you can see the benefits of physical activity. You will have cardiovascular fitness. You will have a healthy weight. Your posture will be improved. You will have reduced cholesterol. You will get a better sleep. You will have self-esteem and confidence that your feet you know you can move around very well if you're heavy very slow it will be dragging <laughs> improve concentration in your works and you know it will reduce your stress depression anxiety you know and enhance social skill these are benefits of having a physical activity and um, so but faith without work is death okay yeah. whatever we hear if you don't practice and so my request today is when we go back once again let us be reminded of this stroke diabetes that you have in heart attack this these are very common it's not uncommon it's very common and us and i told an example i gave is even 
pastor, our close pastor passed away last year and even the same day another person passed away because of diabetes, hypertension. The risk factors are same. Unhealthy, no exercise and no proper eating and place like us, we eat so much junk. And now practical what I will guide. When if I show you slides of uh, the recommendations that they have given, it will be a little difficult because they are putting half cup this, half cup this, this much oil, six gram of salt, less than. It might become difficult. I give some practical things that I follow. You see, I am also not very young, not very old. I am somewhere between um, just less than 40. Little bit 35 born less than. I am somewhere in that. But then I see same age grow. Some of my friends getting this, this much tummy and this. Mm -hmm. the, but these courses help me. It's invitation of such kind of lecture helped me. Before coming here, I first go and run. I have not actually for the last few months I have stopped running because of the duty, night duty, day duty, this program, that program. Our pastors and they will know no, his best friend. How much actually we just go here, there, getting on my own duty every day. So I get time less to But I, I used to take my daughters, somehow God speaks that my daughters will pull me. Papa, let's go for running in the Negrims gym campus. So I take them. Brother says that Bolivar, this stadium is there. So there's no proper ground yet. Right now in Neg such a big institute, Negrims, there's no playground yet. It's still like there's a ground, but nobody has used it. It's just some um, construction materials are down in that ground. Nobody's really seen. It's been oh, 10 years, but I have not seen a ground. I don't know whether in my lifetime I'll get to see a ground there still waiting. So my daughters, I take, I run that circle above. There's a stadium where they sit. So I just, with them, I just run for about 30 minutes, 40 So the guidelines. This will be my last, oh sorry. Oh, I can take all this, yeah. Uh, okay, let me just take. The guidelines is telling us that we, in a week, we are supposed to spend 150 minutes. 150 minutes minimum. That means what? Out of seven days, if you... <coughs> Work five days, 30 minutes each. Okay, that's more like moderate intensity of work. That will be walking or so. Anytime you start exercise, you cannot just walk five minutes and stop there. Nothing will happen. You need to at least walk for 10 minutes to see some calories getting burned. So every 30 minutes minimum for five days at least. If you do say Saturday, Sunday, you go to church. So ex excuse for ministry. But other day, Monday to Friday, five days at least minimum 30. You need. Not only about running at this age, I cannot tell the elder people to run, but you need, you can walk from here to you walk till police bazaar, come back, or you can walk from here to Polo, come back, you know, sometimes you have to park your car and go, that everyday basis when you do, that will help you, and those who can, and heavy intensity like running, playing football, they're young, and you play, so for them, at least it is like, you know, three days, heavy intensity, well, at least three days they need to out of this five days okay but as time pass we need to ex accelerate that time or increase the timing to at least 45 minutes to one hour also if you can walk one hour and in fact it's very good when uh, you carry your partner with you and go for walking both of you will be fit you'll get a lovely time you know to talk to your wife and generally missionaries and all they don't get time much is not busy for pastor work preparing message and that's what you know uh, it, it happens but sometimes taking a walk and after a long time, I recently I took my wife to international trade fair after so many years. <laughs> <laughs> then I just said, okay, uh, like let me say, and I realized you know, that she has been missing that part. No, I did not realize, but she did not tell, she support. But when we do that walking part together, physical activity, it helps there. And there are so many benefits that will come as we see. So exercise minimum, at least 30 minutes of walk and uh, for five days minimum. If you can do seven days well and good, more than 30 well and good, it's for all of us. And then, now coming to diet. This is where it's going to be very difficult. In fact, last year we had a diabetes conference, uh, not last two years back in Dimapur. All the slides, all the guidelines coming are not fitting with the Naga population. <laughs> because, because they had a question. What about the Naga diet? See, we eat in the morning and we eat at night. The thing is, how much you eat? How much kilo pork do you buy? I'm told if I, if you go for one kg pork, the butcher will not even look at you, I have. <laughs> unless you buy a thigh, or unless you buy a head, or some big person, the one who sells pork will not be looking at you, it's him. One kilo pork, nobody looks. Here you can buy 250 grams also, right? So, I mean, that much of uh, meats are being taken and rice, and what is not good is the bulk. What we advise is to eat the proper the naga or khasi style of eating is quite okay. Because 
early early morning you have food and early dinner is very good but remember amount is important you are eating early this side or that side but the amount is if it is like mount everest or himalaya the size of the plate and take second time third time then it will not benefit though you may eat one time but eating that is much not good like the khasi style they eat small small plates that's why diabetes are less in the khasi population you can take little bit of rice the main culprit is rice and potato i will tell you in our place if we can take care of the rice potato these are the main that uh, increase our glycemic i mean level you not know, the sugar level in our body get rise so you decrease the amount of rice and alu i know it is very difficult to pack a tiffin or anywhere without potato everybody asks us the potato the kids every potato but somehow you know this course help me i my kids love eating cucumbers and all and you can increase the amount of salads every day you are free you are welcome to eat gazar salad that we give the leafy greeny vegetables you can eat as much as you want okay for diabetes patient um, banana and all is there it, it has high sugar there are many other like that food product you can go to the net and see the glycemic index but for those who are all in diabetic you know they can take half of the banana we have to eat something the world today is Uh, like discriminating actually the diabetics and hypertensive the thing they are actually all fit and one day we also might there is us a metabolism problem error so if we know how to take care of it like control and you are allowed to eat it so there is nothing that you are not allowed to eat in diabetes okay you are allowed but it has to be in control and side side physical activity has to continue so what i am saying is the khasi style they eat small small bunch but many times that is very good what happens is when you eat less what you are eating gets expand is not it's it's spent already when you eat bulk you're <coughs> putting it so it will start accumulating and fats will start it so we eat small small buns frequent meals for five suppose morning you have taken a uh, cup of tea in, with the biscuits then you took your breakfast and lunch you having around one little bit light you know you expect it lighter increase the salads like that in the evening you take the night before bed you take one two biscuits and so like that we do many thing if i don't eat my body will become weak and all it's not like that actually what you're eating excess is not contributing to your energy it's in going to be deposit at fat what is required the body will take even if you eat two three plates it is not going to help you give extra energy you will cause damage so we need to understand this. so by healthy lifestyle this is what i mean is we need to start exercising we need to every day because if you don't if you don't if you don't exercise if you don't you are not serious with physical activity you will go and land up in having diabetes or hypertension or heart attack if we don't control our diet we are going to land on the same way we get extra weight and these are the problems today you might not think but just think if the same lifestyle unhealthy lifestyle continue for next 5 years surely going to get <coughs> diabetes or hypertension or many young star so i will encourage each one of us you know to adopt to take decision seriously and create awareness just change you might like but reduce the quantity of rice potato as i said daniel was giving 10 days challenge in daniel chapter 1 uh, this what interesting i found from one of the foreigners who came from cambodia he told me see he is a believer in faith i mean such christians no in the conference he said see daniel before even diabetes association came we defined it. in the bible already it is defined when the king was telling others to give the meat portion is not to them daniel was telling in verse 12 prove thy servant verse 12 chapter 1 verse 12 daniel i this is 10 days and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink whereas the king was telling the best food rice all those things here daniel said i don't want that you give me just pulse and water basically he didn't want the meat and those kings luxury food we have abundance and this is even uh, when you are serving as a uh, like missionaries or leaders and people will want to give want to give you and inviting you for food is not and that's why i made a census it's not recorded yet but most of my senior pastors some are my patients some secretaries of association organization out of 10 pastors that i meet i think 7 or 8 of them are diabetes and with bp and even thyroid some of them out of 10 pastors i meet seven eight of and that's the whole scenario about india so 
even all of us coming together here, if we are not careful, we might be included in that. I'm not saying those who have, some of you already have diabetes and sometimes it will be genetic factors and all other things also play a lot. So you have to be more careful. But even if you are not having anyone in your family diabetes, or have, you can still have. That is a simple message. Everybody can have it if you don't take care. So that's why I looking into the scenario of pastor, then I feel if my pastor gets sick, if he has diabetes, he has to go and spend some money to go and visit the doctor. Then he will have to do some tests. It's costly or four, five thousand. Then he'll have to sometimes be hospitalized. Some pastors are they are the leaders, top most leaders. They go to attend a conference somewhere outside the state. Instead of going to the conference hall, they're in the hospital. I'm not saying it's not low. But then I'm just looking. Can we prevent those scenarios? Just think a pastor who is fit, who doesn't have diabetes, who doesn't have sugar, or I'm not discriminating those who have, okay, please don't get me wrong. I'm talking of prevention. Just think like when you don't have, you know, and you are exercising yourself, you're showing about walking, that will help others also get motivated. You are being offered two plates, one kilo of chicken or pork in your plate, but you are eating what you need. People will offer you, but you have to take a choice and so that's my encouragement. When you get people inviting you, we will invite. Even me, though I give you a lecture, when I invite you to my house, I will see that I buy enough meat so that you feel yeah. satisfied and you don't complain that this doctor is stingy, not buying a good amount of it. I will offer, but choice is yours. You have to eat only what is healthy for you. You know, two, three peas and you know, vegetables and that's it. So I will not prolong further. Even David, Daniel, he challenged, give me 10 days, he said. And just see, in 10 days, it's proven. Daniel had more fitness and his face was glowing and he had the most wisdom when I read this after. As I was preparing this lecture, I thought I should share it. And so Bible is connecting. It, it encouraged me. You know? And Daniel was the most wise because apart from his lifestyle, or he had the big God. And I encourage all of you to continue your faith and your walk with Christ. That uh, wherever you are, that you'll glorify Him, and even through living healthiest, please remember the definition of health. Health is a state of physical, mental, social, and religious well-being, not just an absence of. So remember this: if you want to be healthy, remember the definition. Be fit physically, be fit mentally, spiritually, and in your ministry, and no one will stop you from glorifying God. May God bless all of us. Thank you for time.